guys, I'm Steph. Thank you so much for checking out my channel today. I am so excited to be bringing you my beauty favorites for 2018. So these are all the products I was loving in 2018. It doesn't necessarily mean that I first tried them in 2018 or that uh, they were released in 2018. This is just what I used and loved in 2018. And so some of these are older products, which I think is great. I don't think like there's new makeup being released all the time, which is wonderful and amazing and you can pretty much find anything you're looking for at this point but it's so important not to forget what you've already spent your money on what's already in your collection tried and true favorites I think that stuff is so important so these are products like I like I said I have been loving all year but doesn't mean that I discovered them or even bought them this year though that is the case with some of them it's not the case with all of them so if you really want to be loving your collection if you want to work through it I do project pan videos and that type of thing I would really love it if you would subscribe but let's go ahead and get into my beauty favorites for 2018 I'm going to try to go in order of how I actually apply the products so my favorite primer of the year which I have not even talked about on my channel because I was like so busy panning primers that I used this one very intermittently but it was my favorite primer of 2018 and this is the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless ageless serum primer it looks like this it is just so beautiful it like completely blurs everything I feel like it, it's like a miracle worker it is so amazing I really love it it goes on so smoothly I feel like it is a nice um, base for the application like I said it really smooths everything out in terms of like pores wrinkles it just it gives you such a beautiful um, slate to kind of apply your foundation and start working with your base products from there so I have truly enjoyed every time I have used this product and for me, this is something I discovered in 2018. I'm not really sure when it was released. Next is foundation. And this is not something that is new to my collection. Not something I tried in 2018. Not something that was released this year. This is a tried and true favorite. This is the number seven Stay Perfect Foundation. Non-stop complexion perfection up to 24 hour wear. It looks like this. I am in the shade Calico. I love this foundation for a number of reasons. The finish. It is so beautiful. It is a demi matte. It just... It's a satin finish. It just looks like your skin without being too glowy, without being too matte. I have oily skin and I just think it looks so beautiful. I don't feel like I look overly oily with it, but I can see it working beautiful if you have normal skin, maybe even dry skin, because like I said, it, it's not like a, a matte and I, I just, I love it. And another thing I love about this is that undertones are kind of like grayish, which might sound kind of weird, but I find like I have a cool complexion, but when I pick up a cool foundation, I find they lean so pink that it just makes me look more pink. So I kind of want to probably need to pick up neutral foundations. Anyways, this has like a great undertone. So it really looks just not too pink or too yellow. It just looks very beautiful. I, I really enjoy it. I love how it looks. I love how it wears. It is a foundation I've loved for years and it was my favorite foundation in 2018. I only tried to pick one product from each category because I wanted to be like, this was my favorite in that category for 2018. I do have two concealers, but one is for spot treatment and one is for under the eye. So for the spot treatment concealer, I do have acneic problem skin. So I definitely try to cover up my acne before I go in with foundation, especially if I'm using a lighter weight foundation, just because I don't want to have to put like a bunch of layers on or, and that doesn't necessarily cover everything. So my favorite spot um, concealer was the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Breakout Full Coverage Concealer and this is meant for acneic skin so it does have like salicylic acid in it so I love this because I'm covering up my pimples but I'm also treating them at the same time which I think is so amazing because I don't love the idea of I have a breakout and just piling makeup on top of it I like that this has some skincare ingredients so I am treating the problem as well as covering it up because that's really what I want to do and it is full coverage it definitely um, covers everything. I do find that sometimes if you don't blend it out well, it can almost look more textured under the skin, but it definitely covers up redness and that type of thing. And if you're really careful about just putting a small amount and really blending it out nicely, I think it can look just like it's a very thin layer under, under your foundation. I think it can look really nice and it doesn't bring out the texture too much. So this is definitely a spot concealer I loved this year. For my under eye concealer, this is not a new product to anyone, but it was a new product to me, so I guess that was a new product to someone. It wasn't released in 2018. People have loved it for quite some time now. I am talking about the Tarte Shape Tape. I just started testing this out in the last few months of the year, and it is definitely my favorite eye concealer of the year. 
just for the, the coverage alone. The coverage is absolutely amazing. I don't want to talk about this product too much because I'm sure you guys are super duper familiar with it, but I just find the coverage is so beautiful. I found that a lot of my under eye concealers are really great at brightening the under eye area, but I feel like I can still see the darkness kind of peeking through. It's, it's brightened, but the darkness is still there, whereas this brightens and covers it. I hope you guys know what I mean. So I feel like it looks bright and I don't see the darkness coming through. I really love it. It is definitely full coverage. So if you don't have crazy dark circles, it is a bit of a thicker formula. You don't need a lot. It probably, you probably don't need it. If you don't have really bad dark circles, I think it, it, it's, a, it's a lot of coverage. And if you just want to brighten up the under eye area, I think a lightweight concealer can do a really good job of that. But for me, this is something that I discovered this year, started using it and really fell in love with it. And it's kind of like the coverage I've been looking for for a long time before I used to do like a color corrector to kind of cancel out the dark circles then put on the concealer and with this I feel like I don't need to do the color correcting step this just covers everything I tested out a lot of pressed powders this year and I like with a bunch of different foundations and it took me like three months to kind of go through everything I have a lot of notes and there's definitely a video I want to film on that I just need to find the time for it which is this is the problem. I have so many ideas. I like work through them, but okay, different, different story. Anyways, powders. I tested a lot of them. My favorite mattifying powder, because like I said, I do have oily skin, is the Essence All About Matte. It is very white, as you can see, and I feel like if you have darker skin, I put it right here. I'm not sure if you can really tell. It does go on a little bit white. You can shoot out. I would be concerned that if uh, you have a darker complexion, it might leave a bit of a white cast. That isn't the case for me, so that is why this is my favorite. And I just found that out of all the powders I tested this year, this was the most mattifying. And especially in the summer, I already have oily skin. I'm a sweaty, sweaty person. So in the summer, it's just like, there's a lot going on. And I don't want my makeup melting off my face. So I found this really worked well with so many foundations in my collection and it was like the most mattifying powder so I'm really impressed with this and I, I know what my go-to powder is going to be this summer because of everything I tested out for sure this was the favorite. My favorite bronzer this year was the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer and I think that's evident because without even putting it in a project I hit pan on it. If you're interested in other products I hit pan in 2018 I did a video on that. I'll link it down below in case you're interested. Anyways I love this product. I It's not new to me in 2018, but I definitely really did get a lot of use out of it. I just think it is like such a good undertone that I can, it's very cool so I can like bronze with it, but I can also kind of like contour with it a little bit. I just think it goes on so nicely. It really blends out easily. I mean, I'm sure most people have either tested this themselves or have heard lots of people talking about it. It is by no means revolutionary that this is in a favorites video, but it's, a, it's in everybody's favorites video for a reason. It just blends out so beautifully such beautiful colors. I do have the shade bronzer. They have a few more shades now. So if you felt like it was too light before, I know they do have a deep bronzer shade. They have one that is a bit more warm home now. I think it's the sun Kiss bronzer. So there's a few other shades out there. It's more expensive for the drugstore, but I definitely think it's worth the price and it really does last a very long time. Blush was kind of a tricky one to pick a favorite. I was working on paying a blush this year, so for the majority of the year I was pretty much using that same blush every day, but <laughs> that is not my favorite blush of 2018. I don't even know if I'm going to touch it in 2019. I am so just like overusing it. So I was looking through my collection thinking of blushes and there was two that it came down to and I ended up going with the Natural Collection blushed Blusher in Peach Melba and the reason why I chose this over the other one is just I like the formula, but the shade, I've been drawn to more of these shades. So it's just this beautiful peach shade right here. I'll try to do a swatch of it. I feel like that swatch does not do it justice, but it is just such a beautiful peachy shade. The other one was more of a neutral blush, which I do really enjoy, but I just think peach blushes look so beautiful, and I was really into them this year. I just enjoyed that shade in general, and this particular one was one I definitely reached for a lot. It still has that subtle kind of neutralness to it with having that bit of peach. It's not too much. So if you want to go like crazy with the eyes or crazy with the lips, this isn't going to draw attention, but it's just going to give a nice, beautiful flush. It blends out nice. I think the wear time is great. So I really enjoyed this flush. 
Highlighter was another category that was tricky for me. I was very tempted to go with one of my ABH palettes. I picked up two glow kits this year. I picked up the Aurora and the Moonchild. And after I picked them up, I used them a lot. And part of me is like, I, I do really enjoy them. But I think part of it was like, these were kind of palettes that were more out there. Did I really need to buy both? So I was kind of justifying it to myself by really using them, which is great to be using up the products. I use every single shade multiple times. They're definitely something I do reach for. But they're not like uh, every day and I, I, I reach for them and I love them but I, I don't think it's the best formula. I find that the uh, color kind of wears off. Sometimes they can be too glittery. So while I do really love them, I wouldn't say they're my favorite for 2018. And yeah, I, 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 I had a lot of highlighters this year but this one, again, not new to my collection, not something I tried this year, not even something that was released in 2018 and that is the Sleek Makeup Highlighting Palette in Solstice. I feel like you can, I, I don't want to show it to you because it's so reflective and you can see all the mess that is behind my camera, but like, here, oh, here it is, right here, just kind of strategically facing it towards the window. Um, <laughs> if you're not familiar with it, it has some really beautiful highlighting shades. It has three powders and one cream, this one right here is a cream, and they are blinding highlights. I love them. I do really... Sorry for the brush falling out. I think this one and this one, while they are quite blinding, they are... I can get away with them every day. This one I love as an inner corner highlight. So just this whole palette in general I do love. Just to give you some quick swatches. Here they are right there. And then just on the hand right there. So this one, like I said, more of like every day. I think this one too, but you can really build them up. And I love that purple shade as an inner corner highlight. I just think it really brightens up the whole air. I, I wear it on my cheeks as well, but so I would definitely say this palette was definitely a favorite for 2018. I talked about my favorite pressed powder, but I didn't mention my favorite loose powder yet, and this is the Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I really enjoy this. I think it is so beautiful. It can go under the eyes. It can go over the face. It is definitely mattifying, which is something I really need, and I like the fact that I can use it under my eyes as well because there's a lot of powders out there where I feel like it looks good under the eyes or it looks good on the face. It's really, I found it hard to find a powder that looks good in both of those areas and it's nice to be able to just reach into something and be able to put it all over your face and know it's going to go well. This is what I'm using on my under eyes today because I do have it in a project. It's in my Roulette Pan Club. I will link that down below in case you want to see how that is going and I have really been enjoying it a lot. Now on to the eyes. My favorite brow product this year, this was a bit tricky because I love brow pencils, but I actually picked the Hard Candy Brows Now. This is a brow fiber gel and a highlighter. So this side you roll up, it was a highlighter. I really love highlighting my brow bone. It did have a bit of shimmer to it, but I love that it was like two in one. I could just like gel it out and then with the highlight and I thought it looked so beautiful. I love the shade of that highlight. And the brow gel had fibers in it. I really liked the shade of it. I thought it was really nice. This is the spoolie. It's a little bit bigger than I find on some other brow gels, but I didn't think it was too big. I really liked it. The fibers in it are very, they're noticeable, which I think is good. Not noticeable to the point where it's like you look like you're adding fibers to your brows, but to the point where it looked like I was actually adding volume and hair to my brows, which I, I don't think I really need. I do have kind of thicker brows naturally, but I find like right now I'm using the Essence one and it says it has fibers in it, but I mean, I, I, I don't see them. I don't notice them. So I thought this was really great for building up my brow. And I do have a scar in this brow, so sometimes it's harder to cover up if I just want to go in with a brow gel. But I thought this did a nice job on days where I didn't want to fill it in with a pomade or a pencil or like other stuff. I could just go quickly in with the brow gel. For eyeliners this year, I had been... I had some in projects, but that those weren't my favorite. My favorite um, eyeliner this year was the Essence Extremely Lasting Eye Pencil in, what is it, Silky Nude. It looks like this, just to give you a quick swatch of it. It is so creamy. It is really brightening. It stays in your waterline all day. It doesn't transfer if you're wearing like a darker color on the inner rim and this on the lower rim. There's no issues with it transferring. I did a Battle of the Drugstore Nude Eyeliners, and this is the one that came out on top. If you want to see what I compared it to, I will link that video down below, but this was a favorite. I definitely tested out quite a lot, and this this one by Landslide. My favorite mascara for 2018, 
I was so sad when I was like, I should probably put this in my empties because <laughs> it's old, is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I'm sure this is like super familiar to a lot of you. I'm just going to open it up to show you. Oh my gosh, it's like really stuck in there. The wand, this is it. It's just so nice and bushy. I love the way it makes my lashes look. It's just so full and voluminous. Sometimes I do have issues with flaking, I'm not going to lie, but I find that if I pair this with a lash primer, it definitely does adhere to my lashes a lot better, and I just feel like I I love how my lashes look with it. They they To the point where like they almost look fake. Like I, I love this mascara. I have another one in my collection. haven't opened it yet because I'm trying to not open so many at a time, but this is definitely like a favorite this year as well as last year as well as like in general just like my personal favorite mascara so I know I said I was only picking one product in each category but then it came to eyeshadow and it's just like how do you choose like I would I, I loved wearing purple eyeshadows at one point during the year I, I still do there's um, a lot of palettes I picked up I really was loving the Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes I I had lots of favorites this year so it was like really hard to pick one palette as like my favorite eyeshadow palette so I picked three I know I, I whatever anyways the first two I want to talk about are both Huda Beauty Obsession palette and the first one I loved is the mauves I really like this I think the shimmers are so beautiful I definitely this is kind of what got me into this was like the first like mauvey purplies I don't have a lot more purples now I have quite a few shot um, palettes with purples but I really love this I think it's just so beautiful it gives it really um, I just love I just love mauves I have green eyes I think it really makes them pop I really like the formula of the shadows I think they blend out so nicely I will say with the shimmers I feel like I do need to wear a glitter glue with them or they kind of just I've put it eyes and they kind of just like all transfer but I really enjoyed it and the other one is the coral obsessions I picked this one up at the end of summer and I wish I picked it up earlier I love this. I love these two shades for the fall. I think that mustard is so beautiful. I love the corals. I do think these two shimmers are like too similar. They should be more varied. But overall, I love this palette. This one is so beautiful. Like on the lower lash line and the crease, it just really makes it pop. I I love this palette. Obviously, that's why it's in my favorites. And I have Get Ready With Me's featuring both of these palettes where I do a look with a palette and I also review it. As well as the last palette I'm going to show you, which was the Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. This was not new to my collection in 2018, but that was the first time I used it. So yeah, I definitely have a problem with like buying makeup and not using it. I'm sure you're all really familiar with this. Again, I have a Get Ready With Me where I do a look, I talk about, and give like a review of this eyeshadow palette. I'll link all those down below. I love this. I find this is something that... I did that review earlier in the year and it is still something that I reach for throughout the year. I love it. My favorite shade, kind of random, is Summer Yum. I, I love this shade. I know it's kind of like you wouldn't expect it, but I just think it is so beautiful and unique. And I think the reason I love it so much is because it's, it's so nice and I wasn't expecting to think like, wow, that is such a nice shade from like such a basic one that I wear in my crease. Like usually I'm really drawn to shimmers and I, I love the shimmers in this. I love a lot of, but yeah, I think this is my favorite because like, it's beautiful, but it, it, it surprised me. I like it. I like when makeup surprises me, and I'm like, ooh, I knew you'd be nice. Well, I expected you to be nice, but, like, you're really nice. Anyways, clearly, I'm crazy and talk to my makeup. Um, I definitely love, what are these? See, this is what I hold things upside down. I get confused. I really love Luscious. I thought I was going to love Bellini. I love Luscious. Nectar is, like, such a beautiful inner corner. I, I love this palette. It's something I have definitely continued to come back and use. I... I really enjoy it. I don't think there's a shade in here I don't like. I was kind of scared by like the greens. I didn't really think I'd use them, but they are quite beautiful. And the purples, I really love it. And even this, like pairing it with the mauve obsessions, like having this darker purple, I really love. And even pairing this with the coral obsessions, I think can be really nice. Bringing in like this shade right here, Candy Peach. Yep, see, I know my names. Um, I think can be really beautiful if you want more of like a subtle shimmer. I think having like um, just peachy can be really beautiful paired with this palette. So I, I really love this. And I think that's another thing I really learned this year was kind of like mixing and matching my palettes before I felt like I needed one palette to do it all or I could only reach for one palette. And that has definitely changed this year. I really love um, mixing and matching and I find that I get so many more looks and it, it makes me use more of my palettes and just love my collection even more which is great. 
last favorite of the year is my setting spray and this is the Urban Decay All Nighter. It, I think this is the only setting spray in my collection which actually does prolong the wear of my makeup. I really noticed the difference when I use this. My makeup just lasts longer and because of that it is a favorite. It's not something I use all the time which is like if it's your favorite you should use it all the time kind of something I'm trying to get into the mindset of but when I'm going for a special occasion where I know I'm going to have a long day this is definitely the one I reach for. I love it. I kind of want to work through the other setting sprays in my collection. I love testing new products but this is definitely something I know I'm going to be repurchasing time and time again, staple in my collection, something I will, I don't ever see myself not having. So that is it for my favorites for 2018. You may have noticed a category missing, lips. I love lips. I am a lip drunk. I did a whole lip challenge this year where I wore every lipstick in my collection once and I got like 150. So it took a while and I want to do kind of a wrap up video of that where I talk about my best, my worst, my surprises and all that type of stuff. So I didn't want to include a lip product now because I feel like I would just be repeating myself in that video and I want to kind of just like dedicate more time to lips because I love them so much and I have like a lot to say about them. So that video is going to be going up in like the next week or so. So if you want to know what lips I loved and hated in 2018, then make sure you subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love to know what was your favorite beauty products for 2018. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are. Bye.